From tax incentives to wetland regulations, 2018 was a big year for ag law developments that impact producers all across the country. We now continue our journey through the top 10 issues, bringing us now to number four. Roger McOwen with the Washburn University School of Law joins us once again as our tour guide. Now we're getting to the top of the list, Roger. Number four is air emission reporting for livestock producers. Yeah, this was a big deal in 2018. We had regulatory developments and court developments concerning that. And of course, the, the government monitors air emissions from confinement livestock facilities. And there was a de minimis exception that excluded smaller sized CAFOs, confined animal uh, feeding operations, from the air emission reporting requirement. Some environmentalist groups challenged that and said that that's not within the government's discretion to grant that exception. They went to court over it and the courts agreed with the environmental groups and removed the exclusion, the exception. Well, what happened was that the Trump administration came in in early 2018 and statutorily codified the exclusion for CAFOs, taking it out of the regulatory realm. So that solved that issue for agriculture. That was a big deal because without the exclusion, that brought in about 50,000 additional farming operations and made them subject to the air reporting requirements of the Clean Air Act. Also in 2018, we had some rules that applied with respect to FSA loans and based on size of CAFOs. And long story short, that got challenged. That is currently in litigation. Mm. We'll see what happens with that going into 2019. And it has to do with the size in terms of animal units of pigs and, and uh, cattle and, and poultry and those types of things that are subject to the loan issues. Okay. So we'll see how that unwinds in 2019. Yeah, and you know what? what's great is that we have this wonderful relationship with you to always keep us up to date with the changes as they happen. Bringing us now to the top three. Number three is the development and the main points of interest in ag this year, the Farm Bill. Yeah. It was big. Yeah, Farm Bill was big. Some would say, why isn't this number one? Well, it's my list and I put it at number three. <laughs> um, had it been a revolutionary Farm Bill, I think it would have been number one. But this is not a revolutionary farm bill in terms of like a 1996 farm bill where that really changed uh, the landscape. A lot of things continue the same, but there are some nuances that are different here. Yes, it's a monster in terms of uh, $867 billion over the life of the farm bill, but a lot of that is, is dealing with the supplemental nutrition assistance program. Right. So a lot of that is, is there. It's not all ag. But we do get some flexibility with PLC or ARC decision. Now you're going to have to stick with what your decision was through 19 and 20, but starting in 2021, it's an annual choice that a farmer gets. Do I want to go with the, the PLC program? Do I want to get ARC payments? Uh, and that depends uh, on what the market is at. And, and that's been a problem right. uh, under the prior farm bill. You had to lock in and you were guessing basically where the farm economy was going to go. Now you got some flexibility starting in 20 uh, in 21 going out into the future. Some other things, um, un unfortunately to me, they didn't reduce the AGI level for eligibility to participate in federal farm programs. That stays at $900,000. Uh, there was some thinking that AGI limit was going to go to seven fifty. dollars The payment limit stays at one twenty five, dollars so there's no change there. They also have a rule, and again, I think this is unfortunate. I, I wish this, they would tighten this down that allows nieces, nephews, and first cousins to become eligible as family members for payment limits hmm. uh, without having to contribute actual labor. You can contribute you know, capital, um, land and capital, but you don't have to contribute labor to be eligible. Um, I think that ripens it up for us lawyers that deal with farm programs to, to fiddle with the rules a little <laughs> bit more. I, I don't necessarily like that. Okay. Um, there are, again, different computations as to how, a different rule as to how you compute your refer pri reference prices, very complex. Um, I did a blog post on this. This was the last one that aired this morning in this top 10 list, and I go through how you calculate that. CRP um, goes up to 27 million acres from 24. Uh, there are some incentives for grasslands, so uh, some of the conservation provisions are, are uh, included in there. Didn't do anything with respect to insurance. Um, nothing major. They did mm -hmm. some things in tweaking the corners, but nothing major with crop insurance. And then there are some rule changes with respect to organic standards that are big. And of course, uh, hemp is now right. um, a, a, a commodity that's eligible for pay taxpayer subsidies, eligible for payment limits, and it's been removed from the federal controlled substances list. So 
Uh, we'll see what happens with respect to that. States like Kentucky leading the way on that kind of a surprise yeah, in 2018 that was, as well. Yeah, that was a Mitch McConnell. Um, yeah. he's, he's the one that pushed that through and got that provision in. All right. Well, you know, I'm looking forward to what will be the top of the list. So we're we look there. forward. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> one more hour with Roger yeah. McGowan. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Roger you. McGowan with the Washburn University School of Law.